Friends, uh, shall we start? Yes. Uh, friends, I have great pleasure in welcoming you all to this uh, special lecture on economic evaluation of wetlands. Uh, to this uh, uh, economic valuation of wetlands, an approach to strengthening wetlands management in Bihar. I must tell you that wetlands are important everywhere, but since Bihar happens to be located in the Gangetic place, uh, for Bihar, the issue is even more important. We are extremely glad that on this very topic, we are going to be addressed by Mr. Uh, Kumar Gipa. Uh, by way of introduction, many people will be knowing him actually by virtue of his work. But Mr. Deepak has been working with the United Nations Development Program on vital policy measures and advocacy on environmental sustainability, natural resource management, livelihood, climate action, and disaster risk reduction. He has been addressing vital issues of environmental education also, climate change, green economics, sustainability, etc. Some of the rocks on the ground includes the economics of ecosystem and biodiversity, and second and the second one, Ganga biodiversity assessment, post disaster management in the flood affected areas of Kosi region, uh, solar micro irrigation and water recharging in Orissa. Uh, with these introduction words and uh, introduction for Mr. Deepak, I now request Mr. Deepak to deliver his lecture. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, this is a brief introduction. Uh, I, it's my pleasure uh, to address on uh, this vital uh, issues, uh, particularly the economic evaluation of patents. Am I audible to all of you? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, actually, this economic evaluation uh, begins in 2008. Uh, particularly with the United Nations where I'm working. It was a model, the economics of ecosystem and biodiversity. The T model was accepted in 2008 by United Nations Environment Program. And with Edwin, 2008 to 2011, we have a program with the government of India, <coughs> India Initiative. T India Initiative, it was uh, in collaboration with the government of India. And we have started particularly working on uh, the wetlands. We have 13 and 14 uh, sample of the wetlands we have studied so far. And it was, uh, it has taken a long time since 2011 to 2015. It takes four years. It was started uh, in uh, operation uh, of the economic evaluation since 2015 until 2018 to 2019. We have uh, submitted some of the details, economic evaluations. What is the economic evaluation actually? Why we need this kind of economic evaluation of certain ecosystem? So, in a very simple term, very simple uh, for uh, the students, that whatever the ecosystem services, the, uh, be, the ecosystem, the nature has been offering to us. We are almost taking 95% uh, as a guarantee. And we're not paying in return to them. This is free of cost, taking 95 to 96% of the ecosystem services, free of cost. And we are not valuing, even though the government is valuing the ecosystem. We have lost 60% of the wetlands in the last six decades. 60% of the wetlands in India, uh, we have lost. So from here, this water, how we evaluate the ecos ec uh, ecosystem, how we evaluate a certain wetland ecosystem is uh, a debatable subject, is a complex one. So the ecosystem services, 
have not been priced and reflected in decision making and which proves a complex uh, complete market failure. Ecosystem services have not been priced and reflected in decision making. This is very true. Even the government at the label before 2011 or 2012, they are not considering this, what the economic uh, evaluation uh, is, why we do uh, this ecosystem evaluation. And before going through uh, such evaluation, we have to know about what are the ecosystem services, particularly these wetlands are offering. These are normally categorized in four categories. First of all, the provisioning ecosystem services. This is this ecosystem services concerned with the direct, the life and livelihood support we take from the wetlands. We take the fiber, the food, the wood. So these are the direct services to the people. This is under the provisioning categories. Another very important category of the wetland is the regulating ecosystem services. And this is vital because people are hardly uh, know about this particular uh, function of the wetlands. This regulating services is the, the service of the climate uh, uh, mitigation. It acts like a carbon sink system. Secondly, it's a disaster risk reduction infrastructure, DRR infrastructure. And Third, it controls the ideological cycles. So this regulating services in common have no market value, no direct market value. And this is hidden, this is Latin. Even people are unaware of, the, of this uh, function of the wetland. And even the government is unaware of the function of this wetland. And the third one is the cultural cultural uh, ecosystem services. This cultural ecosystem services are concerned with the tourism, concerned with the aesthetic values, recreational values of the wetland. And fourth one is the supporting ecosystem services. This supporting ecosystem services are the carbon cycle, the water cycle, and these are the, these are, uh, uh, the water cycle is very uh, uh, significant when we're talking about this uh, entire ecosystem services. So these four ecosystem services are known to us and the wetlands offer these services to the people. So the basics of the economics of ecosystem and biodiversity is to go through the valuation process. And why we need this economic uh, economic valuation? As I've told you, that ecosystem services have not been priced and reflected in decision making, and which proves a complete market failure. Agricultural from transformed or converted in closed leg does not reflect values lost due to flood protection, fisheries, and biodiversity. People who degrade, this is very important, people who degrade are not the same whose livelihoods are affected because those people or the policy majors who are subjected to encroach or deplete the wetlands are not affected by these policy majors. The people who are in fringe of that wetland, who are living in surrounding of the wetland areas, they are vastly affected by the loss and encroachment of the wetlands. So the people who degrade are not the same whose livelihoods are affected, leading to continued deterioration of wetlands. And another one is the wetland governance. Wetland governance has been ineffective to address the sectoral policies, providing incentives leading to wetland depletion. So this economic valuation is a powerful tool. The economic valuation is a powerful tool since it provides means of measurement and quantifying 
trade offs among multiple usage of the wetlands. This was uh, in a research paper, Barbia has uh, quoted this in 1977, perhaps. So, coming to the do coming to the basic aspects, the what are the methodologies? Because the people are very complex. That how can we evaluate the ecosystem? How can we evaluate the ecosystem in terms of the monetary uh, uh, purposes? Can there are some uh, simple questions among the people while we are uh, going to uh, have the monetary evaluation at their site? That that uh, the government is going to uh, impose some taxation over it, taxation over the services what we are taking. That we cannot uh, go for fisheries, we cannot go for agriculture. These are the confusions. These are uh, uh, the dilemmas uh, always there in uh, their mind. That these people are coming to evaluate the economic valuation. There must be that the government is going to impose something, impose tax uh, over the services. So, in particular, the economic evaluation is not about uh, the taxing the services. It's about generating a mass awareness that this wetlands are vitally important for you. You have no idea about the provisioning or the regulating or the supporting or the cultural services uh, they are providing. So we have certain methods. And in general, even, even this uh, the economic evaluation in India is in brainchild state at that time when we are working over it. So different teams were, uh, uh, different teams were uh, just uh, announced to go for uh, uh, the wetlands uh, evaluation, economic evaluations. And uh, despite I'm not the part of the Kaval Lake, uh, the Kavartal wetland evaluation, but it was evaluated in 2015 16 uh, by uh, uh, one of the member, Ritezi, uh, who, has, uh, who is from the Wetland International, uh, who has uh, uh, evaluated the economic. We will, I, I will discuss about the Kavartal later on. Uh, first, I'm going to discuss about the methodologies. The methodologies of uh, ecosystem evaluations. So these are market. First is, I'm telling about the uses, used values and non-used values. People are normally, uh, people normally knows that we take the face, we take the fiber, we take the food, we take the food from uh, the wetlands. Those are sold into the market. And can you, this is uh, the kind of supply and demand uh, dynamics. So everyone knows about that. This is what this could be the economic value. Otherwise, they have no idea about the unused values, non-used values. So normally, the a very uh, popular uh, economic evaluation is the market uh, market strategies, market best economic evaluations, market best methodologies. So this market rates are dependent on the willingness to pay the disclosed values. And there are, this is uh, the revealed willingness to pay. And there are certain circumstantial evidences that is imputed readiness to pay. This works on certain uh, criteria of uh, economic evaluation. And third one is an explicit willingness to pay. What is this market price revealed willingness to pay? Market price methods. This is very common. There are some ecosystems where the valuation of natural capital in terms of ecosystem services and benefits can be estimated based on the market prices. Like you have, uh, I earlier said that fees farm food directly traded up uh, to the markets. So their prices can be estimated directly by understanding consumer and producer surplus dynamics as with uh, any other market goods. Other ecosystem services such as clean water are used and inputs in production and their value can be measured from the profit sharing amid final food production. So this is why I'm telling you the aesthetic and the recreational values that may not be directly measured based on the market prices. However, the prices willing to pay can be used to estimate the values. So come to the market price method. This is very popular. 
this is very popular among uh, the common whosoever uh, working on the economic valuation aspects. This market price method is uh, uh, very common to all. And this market prices works on the common uh, economic, uh, common market uh, uh, values based on the supply and demand area. The particular natural capital of the ecosystem, goods and services, is directly supplied in the commercial ecosystem products. Commercial market, uh, in the commercial market for the trade. So this estimates ecosystem products and services directly bought and sold in commercial market. So for a common uh, uh, man understanding, suppose you have uh, taken a fist, because I am telling you uh, this would be uh, uh, a very, uh, in, in terms of very complex things there, one, one is uh, thinking about that this is very complex. Yes, it is, because we have no data. We have no data, we have no market structures, no have, we have uh, uh, no evidences as well. This is totally based on uh, the, the sum, uh, somehow data is available in the government department and uh, uh, talking to the people, studying the pattern of the fisheries, studying the pattern of the uh, livelihoods, studying the pattern of the products extracted from uh, the wetlands. So this is very tough in India where we have data deficiency we have no data this is very important that people normally go normally understand that what the face fiber and food and fodder would be take from the petlands is the normal uh, economic evaluation and this is how the market price method is very important the market price approach can be used to assess improvements in ecosystem products and services quantity or quality. So thus the method uses traditional economic approach. I've already told you this is very common economic approach to determine economic benefits from sold goods based on the supply and demand chain, taking into account the quantity of the goods purchased and the different prices, uh, different uh, uh, the prices and the quantity of the goods produced at different prices. So the total net economic profit is the amount of user and the producer surplus the major services value based on the market prices and the quantity so this is how when we are talking about the this market price approach this market price approach is significant significant limitations as well because market data may be available for limited number of ecosystem products and services that's I've already uh, told you that there are four sets of ecosystem services, provisioning services, then the regulating services, then the cultural services, then the supporting services. So this, the market uh, method, this market price approach is limited for certain ecosystem services, what they extract from the wetlands. This is not applicable to the non-used values those values are regulating the climate change regulating uh, the water recharging groundwater recharging capacity and particularly the ecosystem based disaster risk reduction of the wetlands this is not applicable to those services so however at the significant limitations are there market data may be available for limited number of the ecosystem products and services offered by an ecosystem and not represent a resource gross productivity. So the total economic value of ecosystem, product and services may not be determined by market imperfection or paralysis. If there is, I have, uh, India is a place where markets are not organized. Even uh, you see the Kavartal wetland, and if you talk about the market the structure out there, you don't find the market. So how can you, uh, how, you how can you rely on this uh, the supply and demand uh, dynamics? So this is very difficult to go for all the resources. Even even uh, uh, the direct benefit would be take from uh, the wetland. Even uh, that direct benefits cannot be. Uh, 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 
cannot be calculated or evaluated because of the market structure. We have no market structure at all. We have so the market imperfection and the market paralysis may affect this methodology. So the total economic value of ecosystem product and services may not be determined by market imperfections or paralysis, seasonal and species, special variations. Seasonal and special variations can cause fluctuations as well. So these are the limitations of the market-based prices approach. So if we have go through the market approach, then this is a very direct uh, benefit uh, what we take from what we uh, the eco, what the Betland offers us. So the second approach is quite important in this uh, uh, revel willingness to pay uh, methodologies in this category is the productivity method. Productivity method estimates the economic values for products and services. Kindly hear me very uh, carefully. Estimates the economic values for products and services from the environment that contribute natural resources to commercial goods. That means those products those were brought into the market and the ecosystem services, the Betland uh, works refers to the net income derived by law. It is generally applicable when considering ecosystem products and services along with additional input of additional inputs to generate market goods, additional inputs to generate market goods. And what are these additional inputs? This wetlands provides vast amount of water. This wetlands have the capacity, have the potential to recharge the underground water. So if we provide a very good amount, good quality of water for the crop, then obviously the crop yield would be more, the production would be higher. And if you talk of the urban wetland ecosystem, where the wetland works as a water purifier, a cost of treating or purifying, and whatever the cost of uh, purifying those uh, purifying the water, municipal water, it cost be cost would be deducted if there would be a healthy wetland. While evaluating one of the Ramsar site, Ramsar designated site of wetland in Bohati, Deporville. Depor is in urban wetland, where all the municipal best and the uh, sewer is uh, drains into the deeper bill. And in a east to year, in a decade, we have seen the deterioration in the, the quality of uh, the wetland, the Dipur Bill in Guwahati. So, if we have the policies measures to maintain the healthy ecosystem of the wetland, then this wetland provides an additional input to the standard quality and production of the products. So, this productivity method is. Considering with this unused aspects of the wetland, where the consumers are unaffected, but producers getting that advantage. They get the advantage of the water, water for their crops. And even the people, those are living around that wetland, they are taking, they are having the portable drinking, fresh portable drinking water. That's why this is the natural filter. So the economic benefits of improved water quality can be measured by expanding revenue from high crop yield or decreasing cost of providing clean water. So this is what the productivity. Productivity is not about the crop only. Productivity is not about the products. Productivity is about the services this wetlands is providing to work as an input for the production and obviously if you have the high production 
then you get more uh, more economy. You get more cost. So you have the profit. So we can simply presume that alongside with such important habitats, there are variety of set elements where agriculture runoff is routinely deposited to rural agglomeration in the wetlands. Some wetlands also, alongside the densely populated urban bodies that directly impact the environment, municipal best, and city drainage. I've already discussed about these things. So the application of efficient method involves data collection as to how change in the quality and the quantity of natural resources affect first the production cost for the final good, and second, the supply and the demand for the final good, and third, supply and demand for other production factors. So this is very significant, that how this, the quantity and quality of the natural resources get in upgradation, first at the production cost level for the final good, second at the supply and demand for the final good, and third, supply and demand for the other production factors as well. So an increase in resources source quantity or quality would result in reduced production cost. So this, this is quite important when we're talking about and but this is this has a limitation as well. If if you think that we have to go with the market price evaluation approach, that we can evaluate the, evaluate the gross economy of the wetland. No, we have to go with the productivity approach. Even it has the limitation as well. So a single method cannot be useful for the gross economic or total economic valuation of the wetland. We have to go with uh, the different different methodologies and different, different data interpretations, different, different formulas as well. Here we cannot discuss about all those things. We have the limitation as well uh, uh, from our offices, but there are certain things, these formulas are uh, changing time to time, and these valuations are uh, uh, taken not as a guarantee that with, uh, uh, Either we uh, with, go with the hedonic price methods or uh, market pricing methods or travel cost method, we can evaluate the total economic value. No, because every every uh, economic method, evaluation method has some limitation. Here also, this method has limitation that the value resources that can be utilized and input in production of market goods, therefore, the in fade value of a particular ecosystem may mean fade value of a particular ecosystem may not estate absolute value of society in totality because the social structure the community around the backland is unaware of that particular uh, uh, natural ecosystem services that this uh, this is providing a uh, high quality of the water. This, this uh, wetland is providing a, a feasible amount, a very uh, commendable amount of water. And that is uh, important to uh, the high yield of the crops. So people are unaware. So this particular productivity method is limited with a certain ecosystem services. This is not, uh, even the scientific information is lacking about. Even the scientific information uh, is needed here to understand the relationship between the X and improve the quantity and quality of the resources because people are unaware about this action of the wetland that it will recharge the water, the groundwater. It is a fresh source of the water. And for the people who have been working over the wetlands since last 20, 30 years, and the reports are coming that wetlands are the direct and indirect sources of 90% portable drinking water. So this are the lack of the awareness among the people. And here causes the limitations of the evaluation because we are working under limited resources. We have no data as well. Even somewhere there are data available in like Chilika, 
in uh, Loptec Lake, there were some data there available. But here in Bihar, you can understand that we have no market structure. We have no perfect data to go for the economic evaluation. But the thankful or to the team, team, they have evaluated and very unique evaluations. I will discuss about that evaluations part as well. So the next is the hedonic price method. This is also a revealed willingness to pay, but hedonic price methods is predominantly significant in estimating economic values for ecosystem or ecosystem services that directly influence the market. And hedonic price method is normally used for the housing prices. As you know, when the Kavartal was not designated as a Ramsar site, now it has been designated as Ramsar site. And if the government plans to make it a grand, grand a recreational site and a site of tourism, obviously the area around that Kavartal the land values around the Kavartal would go higher. And for the people who go for the hotel or restaurant or the housing, they would have they would have very higher values. So these market prices directly affected by the ecosystem services these wetlands are offering. It proficiently it appropriately applies to the housing prices fluctuations that is largely influenced by environmental activities in the proximity to the house and in the proximity to the wetland areas. So what we consider while we purchasing the house or while we purchasing the land in that particular area, we consider attributes attributes the pollution the quality of the air the quality of the water so the noise pollution so these are the major regulatory services that wetlands provide wetlands can work to counter the air air pollution to counter the water pollution and to counter the noise pollution as well and secondly, the cultural services. Cultural services where people, people access the benefits through a spiritual enrichment, cognitive develop, development, reflection, recreation, and aesthetic experiences. So the basic assumptions of this method lies in the price of marketed good is confined to its characteristics and nature of the source it offers. So this hedonic price is limited uh, to the housing prices. And so the core assumption, assumption is that the people value characteristics of a good or services it offers rather than the good. So it offers the values characteristics of a good or services it offers rather than the good. So therefore, the final price will reflect the value of ecosystem services and benefits that people avail were purchasing the good, but it has the limitations. Limitations are there because everyone is unaware of these regulating services I told. If, suppose, the people are unaware, then those people, who, suppose the real estate, they will come, the corporations, they will come and deceive the people because people are unknown about this uh, services. They will only demand higher prices, higher land prices. They will sell the house in high values. But the actual person, those have the land in that wetland areas, in proximity to wetland areas, uh, they won't get the benefits. So the CR benefits should be taken by the corporations. So this is why the limitation is important that this 
particular hedonic price method is limited to housing prices one. So the method will capture only people's willingness to pay for ecosystem attributes in terms of services and benefits. If I am unknown to those services, I cannot value the land. Why should I go to buy, go and buy the land uh, near the Kavartal or some wetland areas? But those people who are very known to uh, this, uh, the services and benefits what these uh, wetlands are providing, they will value it. So the hedonic price method is very important. And this, this is actually working in the Luftak, the Chilka, uh, the Depot Bill. Uh, this, this particular uh, methodology is working out there uh, successfully. And what is very popular, very popular uh, the, uh, economic evaluation method is the travel cost method. Travel cost method is quite uh, important because most of the people, most of the wetlands, and uh, even in Bihar or, or the Gogebil and the Kavartal or the Barel, they are attracting the people. And particularly those people who uh, love the wetland ecosystem and the biodiversity. But the huge amount of uh, tourists uh, travel to the poor, the Loktak areas, uh, the Chilka, and some wetlands in Kerala. So they are traveling out there. And this is why those, why, while you, if you go through the economic evaluation of those wetlands, this travel cost method uh, is very important. This is applied to estimate economic values of an ecosystem or sites that are used for recreation this method can be applied to estimate the economic benefits or costs from changes in access costs for a recreational site first. And second, by eliminating an existing recreational site. Thus, is an inclusion of a new recreational site. And lastly, change in environmental quality at a recreational site. So, this is the fundamental paradigm of the travel cost method is that the price to reach a site in which time and travel cost have consumed from the place one is traveling to the site of the vision. Suppose you are traveling from Patna to the Begusrai, the Kawata. So how you arrive there. What is your purpose of the budget? Particularly, this travel cost method is applies to single purpose of the budget. And this is here all the, the limitation. There are the tourists, there are the travelers, there are the people, there are the researchers who budget their wetlands for more than one purposes. So it only is it's uh, only applies to certain things that if you have single purpose then the correct evaluation is done if you have more than one purposes and you are wasting that area then the valuation would be overestimated and overemphasized as well so we have to check out certain things and it uh, it uh, depends on the visitors willingness to pay to the travel site and can be estimated based on the number of the trips that takes uh, that they expense a different travel cost. So the traveling cost, and this is very common method. This is very general method to uh, evaluate because we have uh, worked out there for around six or seven months, uh, working with the uh, tourism department and working with uh, the auto wallas or uh, taxi wallas or uh, the local people who have been uh, involved in uh, there around that wetland areas so uh, it it takes a, uh, a long time because everyone has a different pair because if if you if you arrive that your uh, uh, personal vehicle then you take very less time you consume time uh, to reach at the site as some people have uh, 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 is coming from uh, in a group and taking a uh, uh, cab and they're reaching in the site they have a very different uh, uh, prices as well. So there's price fluctuations always always there in travel cost method. 
but one of uh, the limitation is that we uh, incur the one purpose, single purpose of uh, traveling. Uh, we normally use it, but this method uh, has some limitations because uh, it cannot go through uh, the multi-purposes. Somewhere, somewhere people are coming for uh, with a different purposes there, uh, with different purposes as well. And uh, somehow when we are coming about certain things could be uh, here to done, uh, because I'm just coming from the hospital right here. Uh, so uh, sorry for that. I have uh, no presentations right now. I'm just talking on uh, our experiences with you. Yeah, I, I am sharing with my experiences how, how uh, I've come uh, through those evaluations and uh, the whole deal of evaluation in India. Uh, I, I have, we have done this TV evaluation uh, despite of uh, most of the states have no data about the wetlands. Most of the states have no market structures. Uh, we have worked with the local people for uh, nights and nights out there. We're talking about how they are uh, collecting the pieces, how, what, what could be the amount of the uh, fish uh, they, uh, they collect from that wetland. So uh, this is this is very uh, important, and this this uh, this will take two or three or more interactions with the wall. Uh, 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 it, it takes more interactions as well uh, because lack of time is there. So I've just talked about the revealed revealed preferences, revealed willingness to pay. There is certain imputed willingness to pay. Imputed willingness where we work on the non-used values that are we talking about system services uh, that people are hardly know about uh, even the market is unaware of that the price of how how can we go through the prices how can we estimate the price of the just risk reduction uh, that but in that process even it is debatable that we can uh, we can go through the expense of the governments every year the government is uh, expanding on the flood management and the post flood uh, disaster and particularly the state like Bihar, who has been facing the frequent flood, like states like Assam, who has been facing the frequent uh, floods. And particularly Bihar has a very a number of uh, wetlands. And particularly, if, uh, uh, if I have the opportunity next time to interact, we will uh, discuss about the imputed willingness uh, 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 to pay, and uh, particularly uh, the contingent valuation method, contingent choice uh, uh, method, these are, these are highly debatable, but it works for the economic evaluation at the same time. Over the period of time, we will advance at the data and inputs and market structure would be uh, developed, developed. Then we will advance in it, uh, the economic evaluation in India, but it is in the brain child. We are working, but we are working even, even uh, we have been working uh, in a small, a small wetland, uh, like Chandudi wetland in Assam. Uh, soon will wetland in Assam. They're very unknown to the people. And we have uh, uh, go through the economic valuation of those wetlands and even hand it over the government as well, that this is the economic inputs and this is the latent economy this wetland is holding. So Kavartal is now the sole Ramsar designated site in Bihar. Kavartal was, uh, the proposal was said in 1987. And in 2002, the Ramasar committee denied to designate it as a Ramasar designated site. But look at, after 18 years, after 18 years, it was designated a Ramasar site. Does the Ramasar has changed the criteria of designation? And even 2002 to 2020, it has completely been degraded. And it has been transformed into a dead bed land almost. So Ramasar in 2002 denied to give the criteria, denied to give the designation of wetlands of international importance. And they have given this designation at 2020. If suppose Ramasar would give this designation in 2002, perhaps the Kavartal would be uh, in a much more advanced stage of the tourism and all the recreationals and all the provisionals regulating cultural and sporting services. So it's a delayed designation and even government is unaware. And for uh, the information I am sharing you, 
till August 2020. Till August 2020, Bihar has no term like wetland. They are using wetland as a best land, as a Bihar Soil uh, and Conservation uh, Act. So in August, in June, in July, June, uh, July 21, it was designated at Ramsar, the government of Bihar, taken this category out from the Bihar Land Act and they have categorized it into the wetlands in August and in November the notifications was issued from the Ministry of Environment and Forest for the designation of the Ramsar. So I'm coming to uh, the TV analysis of the wetland of uh, cover. Actually uh, it was I already discussed about what would be the hurdle. We have no market structures, we have no data. These guys have worked fantastic. Tremendous work have, was done uh, for the Kavartal economic evaluations. So they, they have, uh, they have uh, evaluated in two phases. One is the vision that it did be SEM uh, before it, when it was completely inundated, before 1980, and the current one. So before 1980, it was very much a healthy ecosystem. And the economic evaluations from the different ecosystem services, either from the face or the water recharging capacity or from or the agricultural, they are very higher. And what over the period of time, uh, since 30 to 35, 40 years, even I have uh, data to say, let me to check it out. Uh, Take it out for this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the ecosystem services uh, before 1980s, the land use system could have annually provide 87 million worth of fisheries. 87 million. 87 million worth of fisheries. 18.42 million worth of wetland agriculture and 9.07 million worth of the uh, fuel oil. It was before the 1980s when there was a complete inundation, a complete uh, flooded uh, Kavartal, uh, com uh, very uh, abundant amount of water there. But after 1980 and now current situation, there are more of the agricultural land. The, the agriculture gain was only uh, object. And that gain was agriculture continues. There will be significant opportunity. Cost is the form of the ecosystem services. It is estimated that the annual loss of fisheries, annual loss since 1980, annual loss of fisheries would be up to 74.19 million. And for aquatic plants, up to 7.9 million. And for the groundwater recharging, 9.66 million. So after that degradation, it was first time I'm, I'm hearing after the degradation of the wetland, the Ramasar has uh, given the designation, uh, Ramsar designation. But if it would have been given in 2002, the Kavartal would be fortunate. Even after designated in 2020, I was not hearing from the government any plan structures. We have been talking and we have been reminding the government about to develop this, uh, particularly this Kavartal uh, would be developed as a center of excellence for research and development. Because wetland has been now the central subject for the research and development for uh, even uh, the environmental economics students, students from the environmental uh, streams, and even the policy uh, experts. They are working on the wetlands. Wetlands are uh, the key ecosystem at present. This is why this team is not limited to the wetland. This team is for the forest as well, but we in India, we have expanded this team model to evaluate the wetland. It's only for the purpose to tell the people, to tell the government that how this particular ecosystem, the wetland ecosystem is important and vital for the people and for the country, for the government, and for the future as well. Thank you, sir. Questions and comments they have been given? Huh? My call. 
Mr. 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 Uh, one is about sorry. Uh, sorry with the presentation. Next time I will try. Actually, sir, I am suffering from uh, lungs cancer. And I am uh, the survivor as well. I have been fighting lungs cancer since last 2009. And I am coming here in Kolkata for the observation. Uh, till 3.30 3 I was there in the hospital. I rushed to uh, my hotel room uh, for... Uh, this particular uh, lecture out here. So sorry for it. I am extremely sorry for uh, the no uh, Whatever I talk, it needs two more interaction. I will come to those other parts of the contingent valuation system, valuation sure. methodologies, and contingent choice valuation methodologies as well. Uh, I would discuss about the microscopic analysis. Uh, uh, it would be very, uh, uh, very formidable. You have to understand. You have to know about how this economic evaluation. Uh, is uh, working in India despite uh, the limited, very limited, extremely limited resources we are working in. And despite we are evaluating it, evaluating with the uh, very uh, uh, high energy team is there. They are working uh, 24 hours, living with the people around, living with the people in the rural areas, living with the people in the urban areas. Uh, nights and nights we have consumed. Uh, to evaluate, uh, to give you a picture of evaluation. However, this is very, very rare, one third. If, if I have the uh, data and I have the services from the government, I would uh, surely uh, the next, uh, next decade, uh, artificial intelligence and remote sensing and GIS, this will work. And we will go through a perfect analysis as well. We will... Uh, even this wetlands uh, restored more economic interests, more economic uh, hidden economic uh, assets uh, uh, for all of us. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Is there anything? No. Another question? No. Uh, one of the questions is about hedonic pricing. Hedonic pricing, yes, I understand uh, uh, the question. Hedonic prices uh, is not appropriate. Hedonic prices is only for the housing uh, prices fluctuations. This is very limited. Uh, I, I have already told you that all the methodologies uh, work in uh, an in integrated uh, uh, way. All these uh, uh, methodologies need to work on uh, the ecosystem evaluation, even. Even uh, uh, the travel cost method cannot uh, uh, cannot evaluate the total economic value. Even the market value cannot evaluate the total economic value because they have the used and unused values together. Or using uh, this uh, methodologies, we have to go through different different methodologies uh, uh, for the, uh, the evaluation. Thank you, uh, friends. Uh, I do not know in what uh, perspective. Uh, other participants listened to the lecture, but for me, it was a tutorial, uh, as if I was in one of those college days. Uh, Mr. Kumar, I think one of the best ways we can make good use of this lecture is to undertake an evaluation study of any of the wetlands as an exercise, you know. He said, as an exercise. And once we do uh, one, uh, oh, I'll take a smaller one, okay? And then the bigger one and the bigger one, and only then uh, we can make good advantage of the lecture that we'll give you. But as you said, in the case of Bihar, I was also telling that, you know, it is far more important than anywhere else in India. Uh, I mean, not Bihar, the Gangetic base and the coastal areas. These are the yes. areas where the, these are the areas of things are much Rightly, rightly. Uh, I remember when I was young in uh, West Bengal, there used to be a post called. Uh, TIO, Tank Improvement Officer. <laughs> and one of the sons of TIOs in my district town were my classmate. In those days, I used to wonder why should there be officer for a tank improvement? It is taken care of, taken care of by the farmers themselves. But 
now I know that how important was this post of tank improvement of this. I do not know whether that is still there in West Bengal, but I think in the case of Bihar, uh, it's extremely, extremely. And you, we have we evaluated for the Kolkata East Badlands, sir. East Kolkata Badlands. We have uh, done the economic evaluation for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we propose to do, taking advantage, you know, lecture, we shall undertake a study ourselves, okay? And so that our knowledge is solidified, and then proceed further and have more uh, deliberations on this topic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir.